received salvation, I felt such jubilation, for Jesus' blood washed all my sin away. So when I tell my story, I give God all the glory, with all my heart and soul I now can say, my, 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 what a joy to serve my Jesus, so glad that I could explain the way I feel, rejoicing in unspeakable joy and full of glory. It's real, it's real. Now Jesus is my Savior, He shows me love and favor. He's my Redeemer and my Lord and King. He gives me strength and power to stand the midnight hour. He is my sword, my shield, my everything. My, 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 what a joy to serve my Jesus. So glad that I could explain the way I feel. Jesus, so glad that I could explain the way I feel, rejoicing in unspeakable joy and full of glory, it's amazing, oh praise God, I know it's real, it's amazing, oh praise God, I know it's real, it's real, my, my, my. so much to praise him for you see he has been so good to me when i think of what he's done and where he's brought me from i've got so much to thank him for when i look around and see the good things that he's done for me i know I'm unworthy of them all, and his blessings he freely gives, I owe my whole life to him, I've got so much to thank him for. I've got so much to thank him for, so much to praise him for, you see, he has been so good to me. When I think of what he's done and where he's brought me from, I've got so much to thank him for. And sometimes while on this way I kneel and I stop and say, Lord, thank you for all you've given me. And one day I'll reach heaven sure, oh please. Let me kneel once more, I've got so much to thank Him for. I've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for, you see. He has been so good to me. When I think of what He's done and where He's brought me from, I've got so much to thank him for i've got so much to thank him for
Tuesday evening. Let's all stand together tonight. We're going to sing 433, Since I Have Been Redeemed. I have a song I love to sing since I have been redeemed. Of my Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed. I will glory in His name. Since I have been redeemed. I will glory in my Savior's name. I have a Christ that satisfies since I have been Savior's name. I have a witness bright and clear since I have been redeemed. This Welcome to our midweek service tonight. We're so grateful that you're here this evening, and we are looking forward to a wonderful time of Bible study and prayer tonight. And uh, we've already started off with a great evening of uh, ministry. Uh, we got to go out and uh, do about uh, 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 just a little bit of canvassing, a little bit uh, sh shorter time period than we normally do. And we just did canvassing tonight, but hit uh, probably close to around 200 homes with the gospel. And uh, so let's pray that God would uh, bless that, give fruit from that, and uh, in, a, in a powerful way even this Sunday. Uh, so let's pray for that. All right, then let's pray for the ministries tonight, uh, the teens, and then the Kids for Truth program, Nursery Wigwam, all of those over the educational building, that God would bless them with a wonderful time uh, over there tonight. All right, and let's start the service with a word of prayer. Raise your hand if you have a prayer request tonight. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him for His help and His blessings this evening. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. Thank you so much for allowing us to meet together once again this evening. Thank you, Father, for our church family. We come together, uh, Father, on a regular basis, and thank you for those who are able to be here. Father, I realize many are uh, watching online, and Father, we ask that you would uh, be a blessing and help and encouragement. Those who are uh, not able to be with us tonight, I pray that you would also use the service tonight for those who have made their way here uh, to be get an extra blessing, Father, for the fellowship and the Spirit uh, uh, and the Word of God tonight. I pray that you bless the youth ministries tonight, that you would be honored and glorified through that. Help our young people to uh, grow spiritually in the grace and knowledge of Christ. Help them to get saved. Uh, Father, when you uh, convict them, draw them to you. And Father, may we see much fruit from the youth ministry for years to come. And Father, I pray that you allow us to see much fruit from the soul winning visitation ministry that we uh, went out and did a lot of canvassing just a few moments ago. I pray that you would allow us to see people saved, even this Sunday, families added to the church as a result of, of the work and the labor of our church family tonight. Well, thank you for what you do. Bless now, and the service is here as we open up your word in just a few moments. And uh, fathers, we fellowship one with another as well. We love you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you can remain seated. Brother Holly's going to sing for us, and he's going to lead you in singing as well. And uh, so I want you to sing out with him with all your heart as we worship the Lord together. Beautiful chorus tonight. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. i 
verse in the Bible, I believe it's in the book of Hebrews, and it gives reference to things that accompany salvation. And uh, there's a great verse in there, there's a lot of truth to there, because there is a lot of things that come with salvation. Does anybody like to buy one, get one free? <laughs> Deals that go on during the holidays and Black Friday and all of that. Well, listen, nothing can compare to all that you received the day that you received Christ as your Savior. You received eternal life. That means you can't get out of it. You've got it for free. Not only to get it for free. Uh, I heard one Bible, I heard, uh, I heard someone give reference to a Bible uh, uh, mention and it talked about uh, a free gift. But you know the gift, a gift is free, isn't it? And, uh, but we get it for free. We get salvation for free. It, was, it cost Jesus everything. Um, but uh, it's uh, uh, free to us, and then we have eternal life, and, and we get joy through it, and uh, new desires to live for Christ, and uh, so many things, peace, uh, love for others, and uh, so many wonderful things that we get through salvation. So when that song says, so rich and free, we can be reminded of uh, the richness that's in and comes with salvation. It's uh, so many things that come with that. But anyway, we have a couple announcements I want you to uh, be reminded of uh, tonight. Don't forget about our services on Sunday. I'm looking forward to a great day this coming Lord's Day. Had a great attendance this past Sunday. I was really encouraged. Good spirit, first time visitors. We have some first time uh, a visiting young lady that was with us uh, Sunday morning. Came for Sunday school hour and then back with us Sunday night. And I was really encouraged about that, young family, and, uh, and then uh, many returning families. And so let's pray for much fruit for this coming Sunday. Uh, join us in the breakfast uh, time in the activity center from 9.30 to 10. I don't know who has the breakfast. I don't keep track of that, but there's families that rotate that. And uh, sometimes there's donuts, and sometimes there's uh, homemade casseroles. You never know uh, what's going to be over there, but it's always something good. And so coffee, and I want to encourage you to make your way over there. Be a part of an adult Bible class. Then I will just kind of want to put this plug in. I'll make the big announcement Sunday night, or excuse me, probably Sunday morning. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and put this plug in. I mentioned it, I think, while I was preaching the other day. But uh, we're going to, Lord willing, begin a discipleship class uh, that will begin the first Sunday of 2024. And this will start January 7th. And this will be coupled with the committed class. So this will be pastor's class over in the activity center. And this is going to be a big push to try to reach uh, families that are not in or a part of adult Bible class. And uh, the committed class is a great class. And uh, it's for any age group, but this is just a big push at the first of the year uh, to uh, encourage those who are not a part of one of the adult Bible classes to be a part of this. And it's, it go, we're going to go through a 14-week discipleship course. You're going to get your own booklet, and um, it, it is going to be incredible. I believe there's going to be a lot of Christian growth through this, and so I'll make a lot big announcement about it Sunday morning when everybody's here, but, um, and we'll have it on screens and so forth, more information, but I'm really excited about that. But anyway, uh, another couple things coming up Sunday, children's Christmas play practice five o'clock heritage hall i'm really excited about them uh with the christmas play wednesday december 13th seven o'clock right in here in the auditorium and we're really looking forward to that uh so parents please have your kids there in practice five o'clock sunday and then also sunday night will be our testimony service uh this is always one of the special services of the year and uh we'll have just a thought well a choir will still sing and Everything will be normal, but instead of taking the full, uh, uh, you know, 35 minutes of preaching or 40 minutes, whatever it is, of preaching, we're going to take that time to give opportunity for everybody to testify 
of what the Lord has done for you. And if you want to brag on the Lord, and I said this Sunday, you can do this at any time, but we are just going to take that service to just say, hey, spotlight's on you. Let's not necessarily, but you know what I'm talking about. You, we want you to stand up and brag on the Lord. And uh, so we're really excited about that. And we encourage everybody to take about 60 seconds to do that, to give plenty of time for everybody else to have time to do so. Uh, but really looking forward to that testimony time. And we'll have special music and so forth. It's just going to be a sweet service, so you don't want to miss that this coming Sunday night as well. Then next week is Thanksgiving, and I know everybody's looking forward to that, as always. And next week, as always, we'll have our midweek service on Tuesday instead of Wednesday. And we're going to change the time to 6.30 because we're going to eat chicken stew. All right, and we're going to also have some hot dogs for uh, Marvin Belcher, and uh, no, I'm just kidding. So uh, Marvin isn't you that doesn't like the chicken stew. Somebody doesn't like chicken stew, and I didn't, is it Marvin? He doesn't like it? Okay. All right, so we've got hot dogs for Marvin, and uh, anybody else that uh, wants to sit over there by yourself with him, and uh, I'm just kidding, but uh, we're going to have a great time of fellowship and a big pot of chicken stew. And excited about this. Robert and Martha normally do it for us. And uh, they're going to take a break this year. And uh, from, from the chicken stew and Mrs. Uh, Christy Holly, but Miss Holly is going to do that for us. Really excited about that this coming next Tuesday. Again, it's a little bit switch up. We're going to do it at 630. And so that um, it, it, you're not, we're not eating so late. All the ministries and everything will be coupled together that night. There will be no visitation, no soul winning outreach that night, okay? And um, we'll be outside, weather permitting. It doesn't look good right now, and so just go ahead and plan on being a Heritage Hall, but we're going to have a great time regardless whether it's in or outside. Then also, I want to make this announcement about our annual church-wide Christmas party coming up in about four weeks from now, okay? Four or five weeks, uh, maybe four and a half and this is on Saturday this year, on December 16th, and it will begin at 5 o'clock. We usually get done probably about 7 o'clock, wrap things up. We don't want you to be too late outside on Saturday night. I believe in getting ready for church on Sunday morning on Saturday night. Can I get an amen? All right, we make, start making plans, and we don't want to be up to 1 or 2 o'clock. Unless we can help, uh, we don't want to. We want to do our best to make plans to be in the bed, get a good night's rest for church. But um, but annual Christmas party is always a great time. We do giveaways. We'll do gift cards. We we'll have gift cards to so many places, Lowe's, Har Lowe's Hardware, and and just uh, all kinds of restaurants. And uh, we'll play games. And the biggest part is the big meal. Now this is a church wide event, and so we need everyone to help us with the meal. The sign-up sheet is already out in the entryway, and I want to encourage you to find something that you can sign up to bring, uh, maybe a dessert, maybe it's a two-liter drink or something, uh, or sides. If you would, please find that and fill it out. Don't wait till December 15th or December 12th or whatever the, win the Wednesday night prior to this. We need that full soon. And so put out your name and then what you're bringing, and by putting your name, um, we know... Uh, we, we, we keep record of that, of course, but by putting what you're bringing, you can look at that, and that way we're not having 13 uh, green bean casseroles, right? Okay, and so we can kind of have some variety there, and so it's not totally potluck, okay? And so we can have a little bit of variety, but the church provides the turkey and the ham, and we're asking you to help us with the vegetables and, uh, and all of the good stuff, okay? And so keep that in mind, if you will, for that. Candy for the Christmas parade. One more thing, let me mention this. Our teens will be participating this year again in the Louisville Annual Christmas Parade. And this happens on a Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock. And we appreciate the hard work that Brother Miss Holly put into this with our teenagers and our teenagers and the hard work that they do throwing candy. And, uh, and we are also doing outreach cards. As, as always, we'll be giving out about 2,000 gospel invitations uh, along with the candy. We'll be assembling those December 3rd after the Sunday night service if you can help us with that. But we need quite a bit of candy and so if you can help us with that the bin is over here by the media desk in the corner of the auditorium. We'd be grateful for you to help us out with that, okay? All right, I think that's all the announcements for right now. Keeping all the other Christmas events in mind, a lot of the other ones are during our regular service times, such as the cantata, candlelight service, uh, but I did want to make sure you remembered about Saturday the 16th for the party, okay? 
Let's all stand together once again. Brother Holly's going to come, lead us in another song. Give it all you've got as we worship the Lord together tonight. I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody. Tis a melody of love. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody of love. Teenagers, you're dismissed. Let's turn around and shake hands tonight. Make your way back to your seat. We're going to sing that second and third verse together. I love the Christ who died on Calvary, for he washed my sins away. He put within my heart a melody, and I know it's there to stay. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. Twill be my endless theme in glory, with the angels I will sing. Twill be a song with glorious harmony, when the courts of heaven ring. In my heart there rings a melody. Melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody of love. Amen. Let's remain standing, and we're going to receive our offering tonight for our missionaries. And so, ushers, if you'll come forward at this time, please. I appreciate the faithfulness of our uh, ushers and receiving the offering each week. And uh, let me say this, uh, that I met with our deacons this past uh, Sunday afternoon, and uh, we discussed giving our missionaries uh, their regular Christmas bonus. We've been doing this, really, it was already uh, been going on uh, prior to me coming here, I believe, Brother Moore, is that right? And uh, so we've been doing this for quite a few years, and uh, giving them a Christmas bonus. It's not much, it's $150 per family. And uh, but uh, so it's about uh, we've currently have 34 missionaries that we're supporting. Uh, many of those are $200 a month and the rest are $150 a month. And uh, we're slowly but surely trying to get all of them, of course, to $200 a month. But this is one big lump sum, as always, out of the quote unquote reserve that we have about over $50,000 in that we're trying to use. And uh, this is one thing that we want to use. So it's about $5,100. And so just kind of letting you know about that. You'll see that on the financial report. But uh, Miss Linda uh, Farrington is our missions uh, uh, secretary. And she's going to get those checks out to the Lord willing sometime very soon. But I want to thank you for giving so we're able to do something like this. Uh, you know, some of our missionaries, um, some of them go to the field. They do their support 
some of you, I realize, may understand how they do things, but some of you, maybe not. But they try to figure out what the cost of living is in the country or the area they're going to. You understand that cost of living, even our country, varies greatly depending on where you live. You know, if you go out to California, the cost of living is just astronomical compared to North Carolina currently. So you could even stay in North Carolina, and, 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 or excuse me, stay in the country, and your cost of living, you have to, the missionaries have to find out what the cost of living is there and raise their support accordingly. And, uh, and some of them, they get so burdened about their mission field and where God's called them, uh, they go ahead, some of them take off 80%. And they don't have 100% of really what they need. Uh, and so they go to the field. Some of them do. Some of them have 100%. But uh, understand that they're not, they're, not, they're not making millions on the mission field. And, uh, and so this is just a tremendous blessing to them. Just something small. If all the supporting churches did this, it would be a tremendous blessing. And, uh, but we want to be in on that. And I believe that is one reason that God has continued to bless uh, our church financially, specifically in the missions department, because we are using that. And, um, uh, and so I appreciate you allowing God to use you uh, specifically in the missions department. So let's give tonight, and uh, let's pray over the offering, and then you can be seated tonight. Father, we love you. Thank you for this opportunity to give uh, to our missionaries. Father, thank you so much that we have the ability uh, Father, on a somewhat regular basis to take out a chunk here and there to maybe help with a building uh, program or like Brother Delapaz for just a few weeks ago for Lord for doing something like this that we do each year and giving our, our missionaries a Christmas bonus. And Father, so many things that you allow us to be able to do uh, because our people are faithful and you can are, are wanting to be used of you, and I thank you for that. I pray that you would bless our missionaries, encourage them, and give them safety on the field. Bless them and use them for your honor and glory, and to bless the remaining part of our service tonight, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. expecting me tonight I'm sure <laughs> um, I want to thank you all for giving me the opportunity to be a deacon for Temple Baptist Church and I just want to tell you tell my church while I'm here that I love you and I thank you for you thank God for you uh, I have a, cu a couple announcements here to, to talk about with with the church and uh, uh, kind of a little bit of a background about two years ago our church voted to regularly increase um, our pastor and brother Holly's salary um, every September, um, and we uh, postponed that this uh, this last cycle because uh, Pastor Holly uh, mentioned to us because he was also a, a deacon, and uh, he actually asked um, that instead of giving him uh, his normal three percent raise, uh, that the Lord's blessed him so much, and and uh, he this was his idea and uh, pitched it to the deacon board. He he would like to postpone uh, and set aside his three percent uh, raise. From the church and he asked that instead uh, we increase our pastor's salary by five percent so we talked about the different values and the different figures on what that would actually cost and look like and then we got so busy with the with the building uh the building fund and the uh i want that mountain sunday and we were so excited and it was just really difficult for us to actually uh implement this so uh, we're bringing it before the church uh to to for a vote and uh, what this is going to be is we, we would basically take and, and um, uh, Pastor Holly would stay at his salary that he's at now, and uh, we would increase our pastor's salary to 5%. And that would be effective until um, our church is able to bring Pastor Holly on um, as a full-time employee, and then we would revert back to the 3% uh, yearly increase to our, past, uh, to our pastor and uh, Brother Holly at that time. So this is kind of a temporary uh, uh, situation. Um, I, I will happy, be happy to discuss any of the figures with anyone who wants to ask. Um, I actually have them all written down, but the bottom line is $12 a week. 
is a difference to, uh, to give our pastor uh, a 5% increase over what we'd already voted on. So it's not really talking about a lot of money, uh, but I believe this, our, our pastor works hard and the Bible tells us that uh, the elders that rule well are worthy of double honor. And uh, I think that well went to a church that doesn't take care of their pastor and doesn't take care of their people because, you know, God has, has instituted uh, that the church takes care of, 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 of God's man and, and takes care of, you know, as he takes care of the ministry. And I'm so thankful for our pastor and what he does. So, uh, so we're going to bring that before a vote um, on the 29th. And it'll be in the bulletin, just like we do with other things that we vote on. And so we'll, we'll vote on that. And I, I would appreciate your support. We had a unanimous uh, vote with the deacons, um, and we're in agreement with that. And, and God bless Brother Holly for, um, for setting that aside. Um, in addition to that, also on the 29th when we vote, uh, Ms. Scarlett Bennett um, has been a co-signer on the uh, building fund. Uh, Brother Moore is the treasurer uh, for the building fund, and uh, he's actually asked to step down from that position. And uh, Ms. Scarlett um, has agreed uh, to uh, take over that role as the treasurer for uh, the building fund. And so that will also be on the ballot for the 29th. And we were in agreement also in the deacons meeting on Scarlett doing that. And she's done a fine job uh, uh, working in the church and, and taking care of the finances and things like that. Um, here, there, and everywhere, she's, she's worn a lot of hats. And so uh, both of those will be on the ballot. And um, as, as your deacon, I just ask for your support on that. And uh, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Very much. All right. Uh, let me mention one thing here um, concerning needs. Here, uh, uh, someone has uh, taken uh, responsibility to fix the hole near our playground. We've got a hole that I mentioned to you a couple Wednesday nights ago uh, that uh, needs to be filled in. It's kind of like the bottomless pit. And uh, we filled it in before, and dirt just keeps disappearing in there. And so we've got somebody who's going to take in some big equipment and take care of that for us. We appreciate that. Another thing that I mentioned on Sunday, and that is um, Christmas gifts. Um, if you want to be a blessing to a family in our church with monetary uh, gift for helping them with Christmas gifts for their family. Uh, we have two families uh, thus far that have made known they've not uh, begged or anything like that. They do or have attended. Uh, some of they're not necessarily members, but they have attended. It's not people walking up off the street. These are people that have been under the roof here in the auditorium. They have children that have. Uh, gently and graciously ask if we could if we do help families financially and so if you would like to do that and like to help with that if you call the church office speak to miss holly she knows who these are and she can tell you and that way you know where your monies are going if you like to and if you like to contribute that i know some people are looking for ways to help other families and we're just letting you know that here's an option to do that uh with with at least two families uh, that uh, are associated with our church family uh, that could use some help. So, again, call the church office. Miss Holly can help you with that, okay? If you don't want to know who it is and just want to give that to Miss Holly, you welcome that, and she'll delegate that out properly uh, to those families, okay? We're going to do our prayer time and our praise time. I want to mention this. Uh, you know, a lot of times we take prayer requests, but I fail to mention uh, we want to hear praise reports. If God has done something for you, maybe answer to prayer, I want to hear that. And I know our church family does as well, so um, we're going to do prayer and praise time. Some of you, uh, y you go ahead and do it anyway, and you say, Pastor, I just want to brag on the Lord for a minute, and so I appreciate that. But let's go ahead and start on this side of the building, and uh, we're going to work our way over here. Let me get these first. I failed to mention our prayer requests that I normally get on Wednesday night, so let me go ahead and get these, and then we'll go around the room tonight. Let's pray for our shut-ins. Let's also pray for all of our missionaries uh, tonight, as we've already have actually prayed for them over the offertory uh, or the offering, and then our country, let's pray for America and, and Israel, and then also let's pray for our services on Sunday. I've already mentioned that as well. Let's pray for the power of God, the working of the Holy Spirit of God in our in our services, that God would work and move in a powerful way, people will be saved, and then also one to Michaels, uh, Ruby Kane, Connie Dopardo, she recovers, Bonnie Smith, Betty Hale. Uh, Tudy Farrington, uh, Tammy Farrington, and ho Hospice Care, Ernie Stewart, uh, Margie Everhart. I was able to have prayer with Margie on Monday with her procedure, and uh, everything went well from what I understand, and she's back home. 
and so continue to pray for her as she recovers. Uh, Wilma Adams, I spoke to her on the phone yesterday or today, and, uh, and so her husband had a procedure uh, a week or two ago, and he's doing well from that. Ms. Wilma had her first chemo treatment, and so I really want you to pray for her with that, that everything will go well for her with the cancer treatment there. Barry Campbell, this is Sandy Campbell's uh, son. He's in ICU at Forsyth Hospital. Spent some time on the phone with Sandy uh, yesterday about him, and I really want you to pray for Barry. That the Lord will help him. He's not doing well physically at all, and to make slight improvement, but uh, do pray for him and, of course, Sandy and her husband. And also Jody Gross will be having surgery next Wednesday on his back, so pray for him that everything will go well there. And then also uh, let's pray for Lawrence Miller, uh, hospice care, Bunny Mannings, grandson Alex, Melanie Williamson. She continues to take cancer treatment. And, uh, and then also uh, Gary Bartley, Randy Smith, uh, Mike Smith, Sarah Hawks, uh, Miss Holly's mother. Uh, at about 6 o'clock, 6.30, she was scheduled for surgery today about 1 o'clock, and at 6, 6.30, she still hadn't gone back to surgery. Uh, they have prolonged that for, for whatever reasons, and so very possibly in surgery now. I think they were going to supposed to start that at 7, and so pray for her that everything will go well there with her procedure uh, concerning the colon cancer. And then also Jerry Farrington, uh, Cooper, and Craig's grandson, Ronnie Harrison. This is my father-in-law. His surgery went well today, and so we praise the Lord for that. Continue to pray for him that everything will go well there. Uh, Alice Ferry, uh, Alice, of course, owns a portion of the property that we're looking at purchasing on the 20th on Monday. And uh, let me just say, I want you to pray, please, that everything will go very well Monday uh, with the closing on the rest of the property. And once that's done, it's, it, it's a done deal. And so we praise the Lord for that. Uh, and so... Um, I'll share more information about it later, Lord willing. If you have any questions about that, you can see Dollar Deacons or myself. We'll help you in any way that we can. But it's just kind of going slow, and we're just taking it one day at a time. And um, But that will kind of finish that deal. And so pray for that, that everything will go well. And a couple other things that uh, the Lord knows about that uh, special needs there. Uh, then also, um, let's pray for Linda Santiago. I understand from Allie and Andrew she's not doing well health-wise, so pray for her. And uh, Marvin Belcher had a sister-in-law that passed away. This is his brother's wife, and I want you to pray for Marvin's family. The Lord would help him as well. Uh, let's have any outspoken prayer requests. We'll start over here tonight. Okay, Hannah. So let's pray for Amy Harrison and then Ronnie Harrison. Okay, anybody else over here? Donna? Okay. Sure. Sure. Amen. Okay, Norm? Right.
sure. Good, Norm. That's wonderful. Sure. Sure. Sure, absolutely. And so I pray for this man that Norm's trying to witness to, that he would get saved, the procedure would go well. Anybody else over here? Okay, uh, Marsha. Sure. Good. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Okay, Joe. Sure. Amen. Thank you, Joe, for doing a good job with the Operation Crucifixion. Sure. Yes, she is. All right. Anybody else over here? Okay, Jeff. Is he got a church home, Jeff? Okay. 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 Let's pray for Jeff's friend. Jeff's been faithful to ask prayer requests for him. Anybody else over here? Okay, over here, anybody? Okay, J Brad? Okay, pray for Brad's mom. Surgery, Friday. Anybody else over here? Okay, Larry? Ah, oh, good for you. All right. Yeah, well, good. That's precious. All right, anybody else over here? Okay, over here? Okay. If you have an unspoken prayer request, would you raise your hand tonight? Okay, as many that can. I realize everyone cannot, but we want to come and pray at the altar. So let's come as many that can at this time and uh, pray around the altar. Ask God for his help and his blessings and, and many of these prayer requests. I realize we cannot uh, remember them all, but we can present them to the Lord and say, Lord, you know the need. And so let's pray for these genuinely. And let's pray for our services again on Sunday that God would just work and move in a powerful way spiritually that God would just give revival in every believer's heart. Sometimes this time of year we can get so wrapped up and so busy in other things that we kind of let spiritual matters let to the side. And we don't want to do that. We want to keep a spirit of revival even through the holiday seasons. And so let's pray for all of these things tonight. Father, we love you. Thank you once again for this church. Thank you, Father, for what it means to each one of us. Father, it's uh, in many cases, a hospital, a place of refuge, a place of healing, a place of comfort, a place of direction, a place of help. And Father, it's almost like a battle station as well because we, got, we have to come back to get refueled and uh, get the artillery for the battles that we're facing. And Father, it, it serves in so many different purposes, Father, for every different person individually. I pray that you would continue to bless. We give you all the glory and the honor, thanksgiving for what you have done, what you are doing, Father, in our hearts and our lives through this ministry. Father, thank you for the ones even right now serving all over the campus, really, in the educational building with the teens and the juniors and the babies and just everywhere. I thank you for that. Father, I thank you for all the work, the labor, the prayer that goes into this ministry. I pray that you continue to help our church family to be uh, keep their minds upon you, their hearts 
tender, receptive towards you, uh, Father, on a regular basis to walk with you in prayer and Bible reading. Father, that you'd help us to stay connected and, and on spiritual fire for you. Father, I pray that you'd help our church family physically. You've heard these prayer requests. We bring them to you. And, Father, we ask that you would intervene on their behalf, that you would, that you would uh, heal, that you would protect, that you would uh, provide uh, Father, that you would help and meet the needs, Father, that have been mentioned tonight, the unspoken prayer requests. You know the need on that heart, that mind that raised their hand. And Father, I pray that you give grace and comfort and strength and, again, provide miraculous works there. And, Father, through that, may we see your power and, and others see your power. May people be saved as a result of your working through these situations, Lord. We ask, again, that you'd help our missionaries, help our country, help Israel. Father, protect them. We know that you will, and we ask that you bless them and help them. Ask Help our country to continue to support and uh, be there for Israel. And, Father, I pray that you would please help our nation to turn to you. Give us some good leaders to come and help us uh, to get back towards you, Lord, the way we should. And, Father, help our Christians all over the country, the churches, uh, Father, that, that Christians are a part of, to do right, to make godly biblical decisions. And, Father, we'll thank you for what you do in these situations. Father, bless services on Sunday. I pray for your power. Lord, I pray for your presence, your blessings, numerically and financially and spiritually in a powerful way. Father, that we could walk away from this place Sunday evening and say, wow, what God has done. And we'll thank you and trust you for all of these things. We love you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, as you're making your way back to your seats tonight, uh, let's turn to our Bibles, please. And we'll be there, uh, remain a part of the time tonight, to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter number 2 there tonight. And we're continuing our series that we began last Wednesday night on competent Christianity. And I trust it was a blessing. I was really encouraged by the feedback uh, from uh, this past Wednesday that... Uh, people were encouraged through the Word of God last Wednesday. And so we're going to continue this. And uh, I'm excited about next Tuesday. I really am. And uh, we'll take a break from this. But Lord willing, after that, we'll get back into this on another thought uh, regarding being competent in our Christianity. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 15. We'll read that in just a moment when everybody gets there. If you found your place, would you say Amen. That's good enough. All right, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Look with me, verse 15. The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Father, we love you. I pray that you bless now the preaching and teaching of your word. Give me clarity of thought and mind and use me to be a blessing tonight, please. And we'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. We said last week we're going to give a brief review of where we were last Wednesday. And then Lord Willow will get into some new ground and wrap this up, this section anyway, of how to study. And we said that last week as we introduced this new topic of competent Christianity, that in some areas of our Christian life, we may not excel for the simple reason that we do not feel competent. Um, sometimes we feel like, I'm not going to witness I, I, I can't witness because I, I don't know what to say. And we're going to get to that. That's going to be, Lord willing, one of our topics that we're going to talk about is in this series of Competent Christianity is how to witness. And, uh, and just go over just brief things and easy things. Uh, and by the way, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. And the less you do it, the harder it becomes. And, um, and so uh, we'll get to that later on. But in this series, we're going to just look at a few areas uh, and it won't be long, I don't, I'm not anticipating it to be a long series, but just simple things of how to carry out some important things pertaining to uh, Christian life and Christian service. Uh, and tonight we're in, continuing this on how to study. And uh, we know we're supposed to study, the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. And many of us, if not all of us here tonight and watching online, we want to study, but we just... How to go about it is kind of where we get lost. And so that's what this series is for. We said last week that you do not have to have a college education to study the Word of God. 
You don't have to college, go to college one day. Uh, there's many pastors that ever even finish high school that God used in a great way. Uh, in the book of Acts, we learn that um, the apostles, the disciples whom Jesus handpicked, by the way, such as Peter, James, and John, I mentioned them, there's kind of the three that stayed with Christ a lot, uh, but Peter, James, and John, and the other disciples amongst the religious scholars and the intellectuals and the religious field, the Jewish religion in that day looked upon them, the disciples and the apostles, and said these are unlearned and ignorant men, but they take no, took note that they had been with Jesus. And you don't have to have high intellect to uh, study the Word of God, to read it, to understand it. And um, so we've talked about that and, and covered that basis. Uh, however, we should have, although we don't, maybe not necessarily need to have an intellect, uh, we should have a desire. The Bible teaches us as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And so we need to have a desire, and I believe all of us do, have a desire to know what the Bible says. And there also needs to have, we need to have some discernment from that same verse in 1 Peter 2.2. 2, because if we do not read it, if we don't study it, guess what? We're not going to grow spiritually. Okay? If you don't eat, you're not going to grow. Uh, okay? And uh, for a child, that's very important. Uh, okay? Raise your hand if you've heard mama say at some point in your life, eat your vegetables so you can be strong. Eat your spinach so you can be like papa. Okay? And uh, eat your vegetables and so forth. And, and uh, we're really blessed. We have our kids... Love, my son loves salads. You believe that? We'll go to a restaurant and I'll say, Michael, what do you want? Chicken fingers, pizza, spaghetti, da 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 da. I want a salad, Daddy. I'm thinking, good night. And uh, yeah, it was a blessing. And, uh, but, uh, but anyway, uh, eat your vegetables so you can be strong and healthy. Eat bread and eat, you know, whatever. And uh, a little bit different than, than his dad. You know, his dad wants the hot dogs and pizza and all of that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but. Uh, you, you, you got to eat so you can be strong. And that's the same way with the Word of God. If we're going to grow and to mature and to be strong and establish Christians, then we're going to have to read and study the Word of God and implement it into our life. Um, and we have to have some discernment there. Not only a desire to know the Word of God, but have some discernment that if we don't do it, we're not going to grow. We're not going to be mature Christians. We gave this, I think, last Wednesday night, that if we do not, if we, we have to understand that growth doesn't happen overnight, okay? It seems like the children grow up overnight, doesn't it? It seems like just yesterday I held Joanna, who's 11 now, I just, I was holding her in my arms and I'm thinking, where did time go? And I know some of you are much older than I have, have kids that are my age plus, And you're thinking, wow, it goes by fast. And the older you get, the faster it goes. And I'm experiencing that a little bit uh, myself. And it's just unbelievable. And, uh, but they, they, although it seemed like it, it went by really fast, uh, they, they, don't, they don't gain four or five inches, literally, they don't gain four or five inches in a 24-hour span. It may seem like it, but they don't. It takes time to grow, and it takes time to grow as a Christian. And so sometimes it's just the, you know, just the, the consistency and the faithfulness. Am I cutting in and out, Brother Matt? And uh, let me do one thing here and, and try to help that. And if it doesn't, we're going to just throw it off and do something else. Uh, but um, a lot of times we, we want to grow. We want to know it all at one time, and it just takes time. Uh, it, it took time for you to go through school. It takes time to learn the Word of God. But we said how to study. Number one, this is as far as we got last Wednesday. Uh, number one, read God's Word. How to study. Well, it starts with just simply picking up the Bible and reading it. Psalms chapter 119 and verse number 9, the Bible says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. And we talked about that it's important to read God's word daily. You know, Jesus said, uh, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And so just as we need bread on a daily basis to grow, we need the Word of God to grow spiritually and uh, on a daily basis. Uh, there's, there's not a whole lot of times, unless I'm fasting or something, there's not a whole lot of times that I say, well, I'm probably not going to eat lunch today. Not your pastor. Not unless I'm fasting or something. 
Uh, we may get to that and cover that ground, how to do that in, during our prayer, how to pray in our Christianity series. But uh, normally, when I wake up and I go downstairs, I'm ready for my shredded wheat and milk. Or my Frosted Flakes. Or my Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Or my chocolate Fruity Pebbles. Or my oatmeal. Or my waffles. Or my eggs. I'm trying to catch your breakfast, okay? I'm trying to relate to you tonight, whatever you eat. And so uh, I'm, uh, I'm ready for that. And it's not normally why I say, well, I'm just going to skip it because I just don't feel like eating today. Because, uh, because I'm hungry. I want that. And it's a daily process that I need uh, for, to, to conduct uh, the, uh, the affairs of the day. So we need to read God's Word daily. And what we want to do is form a habit. Does anybody have a habit of going to the refrigerator? You don't have to raise your hand. Many of you are. God bless you. But uh, I didn't ask you to. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I have a habit of going to the refrigerator. And, uh, and, you know, we want a habit of opening up the Word of God on a regular basis. So that's why we're doing it daily. We need to read God's Word not only daily, but read God's Word regardless. We talked about this last Wednesday. When you get to a point, if you don't understand it, keep going. Don't get so frustrated just because you can't understand it. Did you know there's passages Pastor Bowles don't always understand? And, uh, and I have to pull out a commentary. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, get some insight on that beyond my knowledge. And we don't always understand it. Don't get hung up on one verse. Just keep on going. Maybe you want to make a note of it that I don't understand this. I'm going to research this. I'm going to ask my pastor, my deacon, my Sunday school teacher about this and uh, try to learn about it. But I'm not going to get hung up on it. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to read my regular Bible reading. So read God's Word regardless. We talked about how it's important to start reading through Psalms or the New Testament rather than starting at Genesis and going all the way through. We talked about reading God's Word prayerfully. The Bible teaches us in the book of Psalms that we are, uh, the, the psalmist said, Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. It's important when you open up the Word of God that you say, Father, please speak to my heart today. Please show me something from your Word. And, uh, and God can speak to your heart, but we need to have that desire to, right? And then we talked about reading God's Word open-mindedly. Uh, if God's word says it, let's do it. Amen? And uh, don't say, well, that's not for me. No, if you're a child of God, this book is for you. Amen? Um, and then we need to read God's word perf- purposefully. We said in Psalms chapter 119, verse 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The word of God serves as many purposes. One is to keep sin out of my life. You know, if I, if I allow sin into my life... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deviate away in my fellowship with the Lord, right? I can't lose that relationship as a child of God, but I want to keep in close. I'm going to draw nigh to God so he'll draw nigh to me, right? Book of James. And I want to keep sin out of my life. And uh, so I want to read the word of God to, in order to convict me to make sure I keep the sin out of my life. I want to read the word of God to, uh, to guide me in the path I need to go as a child of God. Number two, new ground tonight. Rightly, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, rightly divide God's word. Look at the Bible again, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing it. In other words, uh, understanding it, don't take it out of context. Did you know that you can, and pretty, pretty much, uh, you can make the Bible say anything that you want it to say? I mean, Judas hung himself. And if you take it out of context, you could say, well, Judas hung himself, so that's okay. Is it, is it okay to hang yourself? Absolutely not. What Judas did was wrong. But if you take and twist words... You could take four or five words out of one verse and twist them and make it say anything you want it to say. And that's where a lot of cults come from. That's where a lot of um, all kinds of weird things come from is when people do not rightly divide the word. They get mixed up. They, get, uh, they, they interpret it their own selves instead of rightly dividing it and putting it in 
where it should be, okay? So let me give you just a few things of, of common sense principles regarding this. When reading the Word of God, try to understand the overall picture of that particular book of the Bible. So when you start reading the book of Matthew, try to understand the, the overall uh, picture. When you, when you pick out a book from the library, reading a book on your Kindle, you, you're, you're going to pretty much maybe get an idea of what the book is about based on the title, right? And then maybe you're going to read the opening remarks from the author on the first or second page, and you're going to get maybe a gist of what that book is about. And I think that will be wise for us when we begin reading one of the 66 books of the Bible is to have an idea of some degree of maybe what that book is about. You need to ask yourself, who, who is writing this? Who is God? We know that all scripture is, scripture is inspired by God. So God is the author, but God used men to pin it down. So who is God using to write this book? I'm getting ready to read. And try to your best ability. Now, sometimes it's a little bit hard to know who wrote it because it doesn't say necessarily. You have to do some research maybe. Sometimes it's very easy. A lot of the Pauline epistles, the epistles, the New Testament books that the Apostle Paul wrote, he opens them up and says the Apostle Paul to the church of Corinth, for example. It's easy to understand that Paul wrote that. God used him to write it. It's easy to understand Paul says, I'm writing to you, young Timothy. Well, that's pretty easy. So we need to get a, gra gr get a, gris a, gra a grip on this and understand who's writing it. Um, and try to understand maybe uh, to who is the Arthur writing to. Um, sometimes in the Old Testament, you're going to have the prophet Jeremiah. You're going to have the book of Jeremiah. And it would be helpful to understand that uh, Jeremiah is a prophet and, and God is speaking to him and then he is taking the message that as, as many as the Old Testament prophets that they would receive that message from God and then those prophets are delivering that message to the nation of Israel in many cases. Or maybe it's judgment upon another nation. But this is a message been revealed from God. And many, in some cases, such as the book of Isaiah... It, it opens up in, a, in kind of the first few verses. It'll help grasp, you can kind of grasp the gist of what's happening here. God, the vision of the, the Lord, the vision of the Lord is coming to me and, and so forth. And so we can kind of get a grasp, grasp on that. And so that's very important. Uh, we need to understand maybe if we can, who is it writing to? Is this, is this in the New Testament? So that means it's, it's dealing with the church and Jesus Christ. Or is it the Old Testament? There's no church there. Okay, this is prior to the crucifixion of Christ, prior to the coming of Christ. And so there's no church in the Old Testament. And understanding that God is dealing with his people. Now, a lot of, of this is going to come in handy as you're sitting here on Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Because we're going to go through these books from time to time. We're going to go through these studies and explain these. And so you're just going to learn a lot of these things that I'm talking about over time. But as you're reading it at your breakfast nook to rightly divide it, it'll help you if you try to figure out, okay, who is God using to write this? Who are they writing this to? Is this being wrote to a church? Is this New Testament or Old Testament? Are they write, is, is this God speaking to a, a prophet in the Old Testament and delivering some information to the, to the nation of Israel or to another nation of judgment? What is going on? There are dispensations, okay? A dispensation simply means that it's a period of time and how God dealt with different uh, people at that specific time. So, uh, for example, there was no church when Adam and Eve were created, okay? The Adam and Eve walked with God in the Garden of Eden. It was a, it was a time of innocence. There was, no there was no chastening hand of God that we read in the New Testament, again, against Christians who uh, go wayward uh, away from the Lord. There was, there was, uh, there was no communion uh, as far as the grape juice and the unleavened bread that we take. There was no need for baptism. You didn't have all of that. It was God was walking with Adam and Eve in the cool part of the day. It was a time of innocence. Then there was a time of Noah and how God dealt with judgment 
uh, in Noah's day against a, a world of wickedness. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. There's different ways that God dealt with uh, his people, he always has. We live in the day of grace now. And someone said, well, we've always had grace. And there's truth to that. Uh, because, again, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord in Genesis chapter 6. But understand that there is different ways that God has dealt with his people. Uh, sometimes, uh, again, mainly in the Old Testament and the New, but there's been different times. Uh, in the Old Testament, he would deal with them with, through the law and the Old Testament prophets. Uh, through the sacrifice of the New Testament, he's working through Jesus Christ and the apostles, okay? And so there's different ways that God is dealing with and helping his people. And we need to rightly divide that. And again, a lot of that is going to happen over time, okay? And just being faithful to church, uh, being reading the Baptist bread, and so forth. Now, number three is going to kind of tie into rightly dividing it. Are you ready? Number three, research God's Word. So how to study God's Word? Number one, just simply read it. Number two, rightly divide it. Don't get mixed up. Understand who's writing it. Try your best to do that. Number three is going to help you with it. Now I'm going to give you a couple. This is going to be a really easy type of thing here. Research God's Word. Research it, one, through commentaries. Now, if you're really looking forward to, really wanting to study and get in deep in God's Word, you can, you can spend some money in books, okay? Um, or maybe some uh, books on your phone or your app and apps and so forth. But commentaries, if you're really wanting to get into studying the Word of God, commentaries are really going to come in handy. Uh, I've got a lot of commentaries, uh, and a lot of reading that I do is commentaries. Um, and I'm going to give you a couple names that I use that really help me. And um, I, I, if I pull a phrase out of the commentator, then I, a lot of times I will reference that commentator, as you've no doubt heard. And you'll, some of these you might be familiar with. Um, let me give you some good places to get some good material. One, Gullion's Christian Supply. Gullion's Christian Supply, the closest one is going to be in King. Okay, 25 minutes from here, 20 minutes from here. And they sell King James material. That's what we use here. And that's going to be a great source. Some bookstores you're going to walk in and you don't know what you're going to pull off the shelf. But Gullion's, you can be assured that the content that you're going to get there is safe and it is doctrinally sound. Okay, and so I would not encourage you to go there if I, if I did not know that. And so Gullion's Christian Supply has got great stuff there. If you're a person like me that wants to put your hands on it, it's a great place to go. A lot of the books that, we, that I have in my office uh, uh, that uh, can be found at Gullion's, okay? Another place you can get it a little bit cheaper probably is Amazon. Amazon is everybody's friend, right? And uh, get it on Amazon, Okay, and so just keep that in mind. I've got a book that I'm excited about introducing to you Sunday night on, uh, that a lot of you that are going to really like and try to hopefully get. And uh, I've got it on my desk right now. Ex very excited about it. But uh, I'll order it off of Amazon. And, um, and I'm going to introduce that to you for making it available for everyone. <clears throat> but you can get also apps. Um, let me give you some commentaries that... Uh, are good that I would recommend as far as the material. Um, one is J. Vernon McGee. Okay, if you want to study your Bible and you're kind of the introduction, intro level of studying your Bible and you just want to read something to go along with your, your reading through Jeremiah. J. Vernon McGee is a good option. You can get on Amazon, I think it is, you can get all of J. Vernon McGee's through the Bible uh, for probably a hundred bucks. And it's not going to be in debt. It may not answer some of your very hard questions on some verses. And by the way, a lot of times, some of the verses that are hard to be understood, the commentators skip over them. Okay? Because they don't know them all as well, and they don't want to send over... They're trying to be careful, and they, they don't want to give false information, and they want to be careful about their opinions. 
And so they've done a lot of study. They've done a lot of research. They put it in book form for you and I. I have J. Vernon McKee's books in my office, and I bring them out. They're not my every go. They're not my first go to, but but I like them. And so and so here's the thing with commentaries. Uh, we use King James material. We use King James here. You cannot teach a Wednesday night Sunday school. You cannot teach any class here if you do not use a King James version. You cannot. Um, that we, Brother Matt did an exhaustive study on that during the adult Bible class. I've done one in my class several years ago. Lord willing, maybe we'll do it another, another time. There's a lot of reasons for that. One is the basis of where that, those, those manuscripts are coming from. Okay? Uh, there's a lot of omissions in the, a lot of different versions. But anyway, I'm not getting wrapped up in that tonight, another study for another time. But um, J. Vernon McGee, some of these, some of these Bible commentaries, they, you may see them say, you know, the King James Version says this, and that's not correct, and all of that. And you kind of have to, uh, like you go to a fish restaurant, you eat the fish and you leave the bones, right? You don't eat the bones. Most people don't. But uh, you kind of have to do that with the, some books that you read. Uh, you have to be careful. And that's where discernment comes in. That's where maturity comes in. You say, well, I'm going to read this material, um, but I, 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 you know, I'm not going to believe and, and understand. I'm not going to side with everything they're saying. And, uh, but J. Vernon McGee overall is pretty safe uh, for what he says. And um, so that's a good good economical start if you want to get some commentaries that will really help you. John Butler is another one. I, he's my first go-to uh, in my office. Um, and if you, know, you can get into some big bucks with co- John Butler. Let me just give you an example. One of his books is probably going to be, if you go to Gullion's, I think Gullion sells it, but if you go to Amazon or uh, Gullion's Christian Supply and get a John Butler commentary on one book of the Bible, you're probably going to spend anywhere between 25 to 50 bucks on one book. Okay, and so I'm blessed as a pastor to be able to invest in that. You invested in golf, I invested in commentaries, okay? And so uh, and I, a lot of this has been given, some of them have been given to me. Um, and so um, John Butler is a good one. John Butler is a very easy read. Some of you Sunday school teachers, John Butler is a very easy read. You can turn to it. You can find out what you're looking for, okay? Uh, another one is John Phillips. John Phillips is a high, is another one of my go-tos on a daily basis, um, and they, his books are going to be pretty extensive as well. And you're going to have a whole bookshelf if you buy all of them. You're going to have a whole bookshelf about this wide, okay? Of all, if you go through the Bible, J. Vernon McGee's is going to be about that wide. So it tells you you get what you pay for, okay? So J. Vernon McGee's is good stuff, but you're going to spend about a hundred bucks. Going to take about five books. Going to be, take about that much space on your bookshelf. John Butler, John Phillips, two good commentators. You're going to spend about that much if you buy the whole series. Or you can do a collective thing at one time. You can say, well, I'm going to buy Psalms. I'm going to spend 45 bucks and go through the book of Psalms this year. Okay, And so work your way into each book if you're really wanting to study the Word of God. And of course, I encourage you to. So research it through commentaries. I've given you some places to go, such as Goyans. Of course, Amazon uh, has a lot of these things. Uh, recommended material, J. Vernon McGee. These are commentaries. Uh, John Butler, John Phillips. Uh, and these, are, these are safe. These are, I've got other commentaries, but these are pretty safe uh, introductory things. Okay? Uh, then research not only through commentaries, but research through concordance. So it's K, uh, concordance. So uh, I highly encourage you to get a Bible app. I've got eSword. eSword, I can highly recommend that. I've got it right now. I've just pulled it up. Uh, so I have the Bible with me all times, okay? If I need to pull it out to witness to somebody, I can. Uh, I, I can search a scripture reference. I'll just pull up the app. It's got, a, it's got the search bar. I can put in one word, and it's gonna, if I'm looking for something, it's going to put up all the verses that have that word in it. It's a great tool to look up a verse. It's a great, great tool. It's also got the Hebrew and Greek concordance in there. Some verses, this is a good example. In the New Testament, you have the word conversation. 
And uh, that's basically talking about our character, our, our life. It's not talking about talking conversation. It's talking about our lifestyle and our living. And so it's good to have a Hebrew and Greek concordance. You say, well, Pastor, why not just get a new Bible? Well, if I do that, you're going to have to get a new Bible about every three years. You understand, just a few years ago, uh, we watched some old shows at my house. And you know, a lot of those old shows, they say stuff just a few years ago that it's like, wow. You know, the, 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 the words like uh, the phrases and the terminology and sometimes because those wor the wording is not popular necessarily and how they said things, you know, far out, whatever, you know. And uh, so, you know, in the 70s and whatnot. So, uh, you know, and so we don't use that terminology anymore. And if, and if you're not careful, you'll, you'll be going to the bookstore and buying a different version of the Bible because it has to be updated. But if you'll just sit down and study... The Word of God, you'll be content with what you have. And there are a lot of reasons for that. But anyway, research through the concordance. Look up the Hebrew meanings of the word. Look up the Greek meanings of the word. The large part of the Old Testament was written in what? Hebrew. A large portion of the New Testament was written in what? Greek. And so we can study that out with that concordance. And again, I encourage you to get a most likely free app for that. Research through context of Scripture. This is a simple one. So if I'm reading a verse, and I'm reading one verse, don't just, don't just, and you don't understand that one verse, don't get stuck on that one verse. Read the verses prior to it, maybe in that chapter. and Read the verses following it. And, and, and sometimes by analyzing and looking at that whole chapter uh, we can better understand that verse if, in, in comparison to just, narr just, just hammering in on that one verse. If I'll go back and reread that whole chapter and we may can understand that one verse that we're struggling with a little bit better because we're looking at the whole context of what is happening, what is being discussed, what is being talked about in that entire chapter or that section and that brings a little bit of light on that one hard-to-be-understood verse. Okay, so research God's Word through commentaries. Research it through a concordance, Hebrew-Greek. Research it through context of Scripture. Uh, now, these last three are just really quickly, but let me give them to you. How to study God's Word, not only, number one, just simply read it. Number two, rightly divide it. Okay, uh, don't, don't pull things and, and again, we've talked about this um, in sermons before. But in the Old Testament, you have the Ten Commandments. You have a lot more of those, by the way, than just ten. Those are kind of the ten original there in Exodus chapter number 20. But there's a lot of commandments. We're not, we're not bound to the law. But wouldn't you agree that a lot of that would do well if we would implement it in society, right? And, and, and get back to the Old Testament, get back to the Ten Commandments, in other words. I mean, isn't that a blessing when somebody values thou shalt not steal regarding your home and your stuff, right? So, I mean, a lot of the, we can use those. We're not bound to the law and the sacrifices because of Jesus Christ, the ultimate sacrifice, but we can implement that. Somebody said, this is a great quote, somebody said the Old Testament, and this is based off a of Bible verse in the New Testament, the Old Testament was not written to us as New Testament Christians, but it was written for us, and the quote on the verse there is for our learning, it was written for our learning. So it, we don't need to understand it. It, it, it wasn't written to me, it was written for the Jewish people, God's people, but it's for me, okay, every bit of that. Uh, a lot of those names that we read, sometimes we get stuck on, and Chronicles, and some of the Old Testament, and the, you know, so and so begets so and so, and so and so begets so and so, and so and so begets so and so. That is important to the Jewish people, and that is that is the lineage we find. We find that in the Gospels, and we find the lineage of Jesus Christ through that. That is very important. Who came from where? Very important to the Jewish people. It's important for us today. And uh, so, and anyway, number four, relate to God's Word. So how do I study? Not only read it, 
rightly divide it, research it, relate to it. So when you read it, think about it, what you just read, and here's the question you need to ask yourself. Whether you're reading in Leviticus or whether you're reading in Romans or 1 Peter, ask yourself, how does this apply to me? What can I learn from this? If I'm reading Jonah, Jonah was not in the New Testament. Jonah is not a church Christian like you and I are today. He came and lived before Jesus Christ came. Uh, but he was a prophet of the Lord. But guess what? There's a lot we can learn from Jonah, right? Don't run from the Lord. Be obey, obey right away, right? And it pays to serve God. And don't get bitter when people get right with the Lord. You know, there's so many things that we can, that we can learn from the book of Jonah. We did a study of it a couple of years ago in the old auditorium. And uh, so... so relate to it. Understand how does this apply to my life today? It's amazing how the Word of God is alive and quick and powerful. And it does speak to our hearts, even to the Old Testament. Number five, remember God's Word. We're almost done. Number five, remember God's Word. How to study it? Psalms chapter 119, verse 148 says, Mine eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate in thy Word. Sometimes I'm guilty. Sometimes we read the Word of God because we're supposed to. Because Pastor Paul said, read, 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 read your Bible every day. You know, we used to see, teach our kids this in children's church. When I used to teach in children's church, read, uh, read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. And we used to do this, and I, <clears throat> I'm going to do it about one time, and I'm going to be done for the night. But we used to read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day, read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, 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 and you'll grow, 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 and you'll grow, grow, grow. And I can't do that now, but uh, when I was 20 and just started preaching, I used to do it all the time. And you'll grow, grow, grow. Don't read your Bible, forget to pray, forget to pray, forget to pray. Don't read your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. You try that song for about four or five minutes and see if you don't get a workout. But... Uh, there's a lot of truth to that. But meditate. Don't just read it just to get done. Now, if you, if you say, well, pastor, that's the only way I'm going to do it today, then do it. Read it just to do it. I would rather you do that than not read it at all. Because the Bible is going to affect you somehow, some way. But a whole lot better. And the goal is to read it. Think about what you just read. How does this relate? How can I apply this? How can I implement this into my life today? Remember God's word, Psalms 119, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Lastly, number six, relay God's word. How to study God's word? Relay it. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, the Bible says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. A lot of times <clears throat> my wife will come to me and she'll say, I want to tell you something. The Lord spoke to my heart about this very verse. And she'll be really excited about it. She'll say, God spoke to my heart in my Bible reading this morning. And, uh, and she'll tell me what the Lord spoke to my heart. And, and many of those I've preached on Sunday morning. No, I'm just kidding. But I'll tell her, the other day she told me, just I think it was yesterday or the day before, and she told me, she's like, it's supper time. And the kids, we were eating spaghetti, and the kids were around the table. And, um, and she said, I guess it was Monday or Tuesday. And she, I can't remember. Anyway, uh, it was sometime this year. And uh, she said, she said, uh, she said, I want to tell you what the Lord spoke to my heart about. And she went into this, and she was about a couple minutes. Maybe she was telling me what she was going to preach at the ladies' meeting last night. Or teach, whatever she did. And so... You know what I'm saying. So, and I, and I thought, man, that's good. I thought, man, I'm going to preach that. And uh, I don't get my sermons from my wife. But a lot of things that God speaks to her heart about are an encouragement to me. And she, you, well, a lot of times when you relay what God spoke to your heart about, it's a, maybe not a profound truth, and maybe your spouse already knows it. But you're sharing what God spoke to your heart about, and you're excited about it. And that could be a blessing to somebody else that, wow, my, my spouse is growing. Don't you love to hear your kids say, wow, this is what I learned. Wednesday night, Kids for Truth, or 
This is what I learned in Sunday school. Or, and we ought to relay that. There's nothing really quite like teaching a class that helps you grow spiritually because you're, you're almost like in a position where you have to study because Sunday's coming and, or Wednesday's coming and you've got to teach your class something. And so it kind of puts you in a position where I've got to study the Word of God because these people are hungry and I've got to have something to give to them. And so it's a great opportunity when you become established and mature to get to the next level really uh, to really get you in the Word of God uh, is to be put in position of an assistant or some type of teaching position and, uh, and how God can use you in a great way there. Um, so let's review and we're done tonight. Number one, how to study the Word of God. I know this is not an exhaustive type of deep application and study and all of that, but I'm just trying to help you tonight with just some simple things about how to study your Bible. Because we don't want to overcomplicate it. Sometimes we overcomplicate salvation. Sometimes we overcomplicate things. And it doesn't need to be that way. It's just it's simple. It's simple. But how to study? Just read it. Just, that's where it starts. You say, Pastor, I really haven't got off number one. Stay there. Read God's Word. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to, if you implement it and receive it, it's going to help you. Read it. Rightly divide it. Try to, try to figure out who's writing it. Is, it, is, 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 is God speaking to a prophet? How is this? What's, what's happening here? Uh, number three, research God's word. Try to get some commentaries. Um, being faithful on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. When the word of God, that's why it's important to be in a church where the Bible is preached. Because if the Bible is preached, you're going to get some help. Now, if it's my opinions or a preacher's opinions, you're not going to get much. But if the word of God goes forth, you're going to get something. Uh, and then uh, relate to it. Apply it. Okay? Uh, remember, because listen, if you get all it up here, if you get all the knowledge, what, what good is it if you don't apply it, right? So relate to it, remember it, hide it in your heart, meditate on it, relay it. Tell somebody, okay, uh, what God has done for you. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes tonight. Heads bowed and eyes are closed. The invitation's here. If you're here tonight and do not know Jesus as your Savior, tonight will be a wonderful night to trust Him as your Savior. If you're here tonight and you have a need in your life, whatever that may be, would you come? And uh, as our instruments begin playing, let's all stand our feet with heads bowed and eyes are closed. And I want to encourage you to come tonight and make that need known to the Lord if you have a need, whatever that may be. We never want to close a service. I understand it's not really a preaching message. It's more of a talking message. Uh, thought, kind of a teaching thing, but uh, if you have a need tonight, would you come in the stillness of this moment, respond to the working of the Holy Spirit in your life. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for your word. I pray that you would help us, Father, to grow spiritually. Not just in church, but, Father, in our homes, in our lives. Father, to grow, to mature through messages, through teaching, through adult classes, through simply just studying the word of God on our own in these simple forms. We love you tonight. Help us this rest of the week, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you so much for coming tonight. Great crowd, great spirit. I love you so very much. You're the best. And I want to thank you again for being here. All right? Turn around and smile and shake a hand. Thank one another for being here tonight. God bless you. You're dismissed. Don't forget about the sign-up sheet for the Christmas dinner tonight. You're dismissed.